whilst I warm this car to get ready to step out to Walmart, there is a pressing issue that uh, I want to quickly talk about. And this has actually been on my bucket list, but I've not gotten the chance to talk about it or to discuss it. Now, if you're a diaspora, if, you, if you're an African living in the diaspora, okay, wherever you find yourself, if you're an African living in the diaspora and you have tried to establish a business back home, you will clearly understand what I'm about to say. Okay. Let me focus on Ghana, okay? I don't know about any other African country, but let me focus on Ghana. So if you're a Ghanaian living in the diaspora, and you have ever tried to establish a business in Ghana, you would clearly understand what I'm about to say. Now, most of our people, okay, most of our people, university graduates, people, uh, see, uh, high school leavers, uh, you know, most of the youth, and put it this way, most of the unemployed youth always talk about job employment creation of you know employment they talk about the lack of employment in the country however if you are a diaspora and you go back home try to establish business for your people the same people who are crying for jobs will be the same people to tear down your business they will be the same people to destroy your business and you know the funny thing? After they destroy your business, after they tear it down, they run your business down to ground zero, all they keep saying is, oh, you have to be on the ground. Oh, you were not on the ground. That's why your business uh, didn't go on well. You have to be on your grounds. Meanwhile, these are the same people who hold certain proverbs dear to their heart. You know, they'll tell Ghanaians will tell you that, oh, oh yeah, we'll be there here and we'll be here here. When you take care of someone's business or when you take care of somebody's own, yours will be better as well. That's what they keep saying. Oh, yeah, we'll be there here and we'll be here here. But these are the same people who will run down your business. You know? And guess what? They take good care of foreigners businesses okay so if you're lebanese and you've established a business in ghana there is a high chance of the business flourishing if you're chinese you establish a business in ghana there are high chances of the business flourishing wherever you you know there is there is a high possibility that your business will stand if you're a foreigner however if you are a ghanaian living in the diaspora you go back home try to establish a business to benefit your own people they will tear it down for you families you cannot even trust families friends or loved ones to handle your business for you whilst you've tried to establish a business and maybe you have personal issues to come back to in your residence to take care of by the time you return back to ghana to see how the business is doing, they would have completely run it down for you. Completely run it down. They won't give you any account statements. Uh, basically, they, they won't give you any tangible reason as to why the business is not doing well or why the business has failed or is failing. They're going to steal from you. They're going to steal, you know, uh, uh your profits they're gonna dip their hands into your profits you know the item if you, if you are doing retailing the items that you are selling they're going to steal it or they may sell it at a high purchase you know all kinds of stuff just to destroy your business and when you come back you know the funny thing they will tell you oh uh if you push in if you push in more money you know, if you push in more capital, if you do this and that, you know, your business will stand. It's all lies, my brothers and sisters. It's lies, typical lies. You know, save your money. I'm not saying don't do business in Ghana. 
it is absolutely one of the best things you can ever do if you have enough capital if you have the funds to want to set up a business in ghana go ahead and do it okay go ahead and do it there's been numerous or countless number of diasporans or uh, Ghanaians in the diaspora who have gone back home to establish businesses and they are doing marvelously well however if you have never failed Okay. If you have never failed as a Ghanaian living in the diaspora trying to establish a business in Ghana, I'm telling you, just try it and see. Just try it and see. If you're a Ghanaian living in the diaspora and you've established business in Ghana, you can leave your comments in the comment section. Leave me a comment. Let us discuss. How do our people treat you? How do they treat your businesses? You know? How do family, friends, loved ones that you entrust your business in uh, that you entrust your business to? How do they take care of your business? You know, in the long run, they come and tell you, "Oh, you have to pump in more money. You have to buy more machinery. You have to do more this. You have to do more this." Massa, massa. The little that we started, you were not able to take care of it you are not able to sustain it you know so me personally save your money save your money save your money save your money because it is not easy to establish business back home whilst living in the diaspora and most times when you establish the businesses definitely there are one or two things you have to go back to your residence that's wherever you live in you know outside ghana you have to go back to to take care of either family family issues you know your personal issues maybe you know you uh, maybe maybe your job you know something somehow you have to go back and take care of personal issues and if you go man what be tight you go and you stay for more than three, four, five, six months. By the time you come back to Ghana, your business will be run down. They will destroy the whole business for you. It's just as simple as that. So be very careful who you entrust your business to. Be very, very mindful. Make sure you have um, uh, a lot of things in place, you know. For your business to stand, you have to be extremely careful. You have to be extremely careful. All right, so you can leave me a comment. Let us discuss this. If you're an African living in the, I mean, if you're a Ghanaian living in the diaspora and you've tried to establish business in Ghana and it's not going on well, leave me a comment and let us discuss it. You know, let us discuss this. Now, the most annoying thing is they tell you, oh, you have to be on the grounds. Master, I have personal things that I have to handle. You know, I have taught, worked, saved money to establish a business. And you are telling me that, you know, uh, I have to be on the grounds to make sure that the business is doing well. You know, and when the business collapse, they are the same ones who will come back and be asking you for money. The same ones who will come back and be begging you to establish another business. You know. It, it is it is very sad we have to change our attitude we definitely have to change our attitude it's it's not good at all it's not good we are not doing ourselves any good at all you know all right so i don't <clears throat> i just didn't want to use certain words because you know if you use it people will say you know you are insulting them or whatnot that's why i had to tone down on the words that i have to use you know so i'm not going to use it you know i'm not going to say Ghanaians are this Ghanaians are that you know no we just have to learn to be better we have to learn to treat each other better your own family and your own family your own blood you know you treat foreigners better than you treat your own people you know it's very sad very very sad and you can see this vividly okay if you arrive at kutuka international airport 
the way they treat people with United States passport or other countries like Canada, Germany, the way they treat them is very, very different from the way they treat Ghanaians. Very different from the way they treat Ghanaians. You know, they will heckle you, you know, ask you silly questions. You know, you're not asking those questions to the foreigners. You know, you make it easy for foreigners to depart uh, Ghana and to our, when, when, when they arrive in the country, you make it easy for them. And when we are departing, you make it so difficult for us. You ask us silly questions like, it's just, it's just so absurd. It's just so annoying. And when you come back to, uh, they start asking you baseless questions. It doesn't speak well of us at all. Currently, what the Maya went through this at the uh, uh, at the Togo border, uh, uh, he was lucky enough that someone helped him uh, at the Benin border, so he went through easily. You know, he had an immigration officer to help him because he didn't want to go through the same hassle that he went through at the Togo border. But this brother did so well, stood his grounds. And, you know, he, he fought very hard for his rights. You know, it's getting too much. It is getting too much. We have to treat our brothers and sisters with respect. Okay, we have to love ourselves. Love your own. No one is saying do not love a foreigner, but love your own as well. Treat your own right. You know? That's all I have to say. I'll see you in my next video. It is adieu for now.